If you are looking for a new and creative way to improve your English and reach fluency, then I have good news. You clicked on the right video. Let's jump right in to today's deep work English lesson. Follow me. Let's begin with a quick read of the story. All you need to do is sit back, relax, and listen. It'll take just a couple minutes to read the story quickly the first time. Let's take a look. Into the Wild Christopher McCandless, an adventurous and idealistic young man, graduated from Emory University in 1990. Despite having a promising future, Chris felt deeply dissatisfied with the materialistic world and yearned for a more meaningful experience. Inspired by the writings of Jack London and Henry David Thoreau, he decided to leave his privileged life behind and embark on a journey into the wilderness. Chris donated his savings to charity, abandoned his possessions, and set off on an adventure across America, adopting the name Alexander Supertramp. His ultimate goal was to reach the wilds of Alaska and live off the land. Along the way, Chris met various people who were captivated by his charisma and determination. However, he was resolute in his quest for solitude and self-discovery, often distancing himself from those who grew too attached. In April 1992, Chris finally reached the Alaskan wilderness. He found an old abandoned bus, which he called the Magic Bus, and made it his home. Chris was ecstatic at first, reveling in the freedom and beauty of nature. He kept a journal, documenting his thoughts and experiences as he lived off the land. However, as the days turned into weeks, Chris began to face the harsh realities of his situation. He struggled to find enough food, and his lack of proper equipment and knowledge became apparent. Despite his determination, the isolation and unforgiving environment took a toll on him. His entries in the journal became more desperate as he realized the perilous consequences of his unpreparedness. In a final attempt to escape the wilderness, Chris discovered that the river he had crossed earlier had swollen and become impassable due to the melting snow. Trapped and weakened by starvation, he returned to the magic bus where he spent his last days. In his journal, he wrote a poignant farewell, acknowledging his mistakes and expressing regret for the pain he caused his family. Chris McCandless's story is both inspiring and cautionary. It highlights the allure of adventure and the search for meaning, but also underscores the importance of preparation and respect for nature's power. His journey into the wild, though tragic, continues to resonate with those who seek to understand the complexities of human ambition and the desire for true freedom. Awesome job with that, guys. That was a very quick look at today's story, a very quick read of Into the Wild. What we're going to do now is take a look at this vocabulary breakdown. This vocabulary breakdown, and we're going to make sure that we understand the more difficult words that we saw in this story. We'll take a look at the definitions, like what the words mean. We'll take a look at synonyms or similar words, antonyms, words that mean the opposite. We'll read the word again in the context of the story, and then I'll even give you some bonus examples. So we are going to really thoroughly understand these words. Let's start with idealistic. 
idealistic, okay? It means characterized by or defined by the pursuit of noble goals or ideals, often without regard to practicality or being practical, doing things that make sense, right? Being practical. So some synonyms might be a visionary, utopian, romantic. If you see the world in the best way possible, the most romantic way possible, right? Okay, so these are some words that mean the same thing, basically. You know utopian, right? It comes from the word utopia, which is a perfect society, right? A utopia is a world, a society that is perfect without flaw. Okay, A romantic is like you see a romanticized version of the world. You are an optimist, a hopeful optimist about the world. Okay, So if you are characterized by these things, then you are idealistic. You see the world in the pursuit of noble goals or ideals. Okay, Some antonyms might be realistic or pragmatic. Pragmatic, that just means practical, okay? It means maybe you see the world in a more black and white way. You're not such a visionary. You're not such a romantic. Uh, you're a bit skeptical. You're a bit realistic. You're a bit pragmatic. In the story, we saw Christopher McCandless, an adventurous and idealistic young man, Da 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 da, right? Adventurous, of course, that means he loves to go on adventure, right? He loves to go on adventure. He's not so worried about the risks of travel. He's willing to put himself out there and explore, okay? Her idealistic nature led her to volunteer for many social causes, okay? If you have an idealistic nature, then that means the way you are. It's in your nature, we often say. It's in your nature. It's the way you are, the way you were made, the way you were created. It's in my nature to uh, be an English teacher. I think it's a part of who I am. It's in my nature to procrastinate a little bit, right? It's in my nature to... Uh, be a bit idealistic, I think. I think I'm a little bit of a romantic, just like Chris McCandless in the story. Despite the challenges, he remained idealistic about making a positive change. Okay, so there are these challenges that Chris faces in his adventures and his journeys, right? But despite those challenges, or we can say, in spite of... In spite of the challenges, he remained idealistic. He stayed idealistic. In other words, he did not change his idealistic ways. How about you guys? Would you say that you are idealistic like Chris McCandless? Would you say that you are a romantic? Or maybe you're a bit more pragmatic, a bit more practical, maybe a bit more realistic about how you see the world can let me know in the comments section. Another word we saw in the story was yearned. Yearned, okay? This is kind of a bookish word, kind of a literary word. It means you have an intense longing or desire for something. An intense longing or desire for something. You're craving something. You deeply desire something. You really want to do something. So yeah, we could say longed, craved, desired. Okay, these are all synonyms or similar words. Some antonyms might be if you feel indifferently about something. If you are uninterested in something, right? That's the opposite. Yeah, some antonyms might be indifferent or uninterested. If you are not interested in something, if you don't crave it, you don't desire it, you don't long for it, if you are indifferent, then that means the opposite of yearned, right? Let's take a look at the context of the story. 
Chris felt deeply dissatisfied with the materialistic world. Ooh, that's a great word. Materialistic. Okay. He yearned for a more meaningful existence. Materialistic, that's talking about material things. Material things. Your house, your clothes, your car. Another word that people associate with this might be superficial superficial or maybe shallow shallow a lot of people would see a desire to have money and a big house and a nice car they would see the desire for those things as superficial or shallow right it seems um kind of insincere or it seems kind of materialistic like you place too much emphasis you care too much about these material things right so chris is deeply dissatisfied with the world of materialism and he yearns for a more meaningful existence something with more meaning right so here's another example she yearned for the days when life was simpler right she deeply desires the days when life was simpler maybe things are complicated now maybe life is stressful now and she likes to think back to when she was a kid when she was a little kid when she was a child and life was simpler she yearns for those days. She yearns for those lost days, right? He yearned to travel and explore new cultures. So this guy, in bonus example two, maybe he's stuck at a desk job, right? He's just living day to day and he wants to break away from that. He wants to break out of that and travel and explore new cultures, new places, a lot like Chris McCandless. Another word we saw in the story was resolute. It looks like we say resolute because of this S, but actually it's pronounced with a Z, resolute. It means admirably purposeful or admirably purposeful, determined, and unwavering, okay? These are a good way to think about it. Determined and unwavering. Steadfast. You are not going to change. You are set in your ways. You know what you want and you are determined to get what you want, okay? You are confident and you are steadfast and you are unwavering. If you waver, that means that uh, maybe you're not so certain. Maybe you're not so sure, right? We can see the antonym here, the opposite word, wavering or indecisive. Ah, uh, indecisive. You can't make up your mind, right? You're wavering. Mm, not quite sure. But if you are resolute, resolute in your opinions, resolute in your ideas, then you are purposeful. You know what you're doing and you are determined to get or keep thinking whatever it is, right? In the story, we saw he was resolute in his quest or his mission, right? His mission for solitude and self-discovery, okay? His solitude means peace and quiet, peace and quiet, being alone, being alone. If you crave solitude, or to use a vocab word, you yearn for solitude, then that means you really desire to be by yourself. You desire to be solitary. Solitude, that's a noun. Solitary, that's an adjective. He's a pretty solitary guy. That means he spends a lot of time by himself, right? Okay, bonus example. She remained resolute in her decision despite the challenges. So there are some problems. There are some challenges pushing up against her decision, right? What is she resolute in? She's resolute in her decision. 
she's resolute in this decision that she's making. So in other words, she is steadfast in her decision. She is determined to follow through with her decision. Bonus example, his resolute attitude helped him achieve his goals. Okay, what's resolute? His attitude is resolute. His attitude is resolute. It's unwavering. He's not going to change how he feels. And that helps him do what? Achieve. Achieve what? Achieve his goals. Next, we have ecstatic. This is a really great word. I love this word. Feeling or expressing overwhelming happiness. This is the key. Overwhelming happiness. Okay? So you are overjoyed, elated, thrilled. In other words, you are super duper <laughs> happy. Okay? Yeah, maybe some things make you happy. Like, uh, you know, a nice sunset. Watching the sunset, maybe that makes you happy, right? But ecstatic is a level beyond happy. Ecstatic is the feeling of seeing that you won the lottery and you just won a million dollars, right? Ecstatic is learning that you got the promotion at work, okay? Ecstatic is a feeling of extreme overwhelming happiness. Overwhelming means you're so happy you don't know what to do about it. You can't even process your emotions, right? So in the story, we saw Chris was ecstatic at first, reveling in the freedom and beauty of nature. Ooh, reveling in. That means he's really taking it in. He's really experiencing it and he's enjoying the act of experiencing it, right? So when he gets into nature at first, right, he is ecstatic because he's left society and he's thrust himself into nature, thrown himself into nature. And that feeling, that feeling of getting away from the big city, getting into nature, that's ecstatic to him. Bonus example, she was ecstatic when she received the job offer, she was super happy. Bonus example two, they were ecstatic to finally see their favorite band live. What does it mean if you see a band live? It means you watch them perform in person. Yeah, you don't just see them play on TV, see them perform on TV, you watch them with your own eyes in person, right? So that experience was ecstatic. Hey, what about you guys? What's something that you've experienced in your life that made you feel ecstatic? Let me know in the comments. Just a couple more advanced vocab words to talk quickly about here. Perilous means full of danger or risk, okay? It's a synonym for dangerous, hazardous, risky, okay? If something is perilous, that is just another way of saying dangerous. This is an advanced vocab word that you really don't need to overthink too much. Um, it's a bit more bookish, a bit more literary than dangerous. Probably in day-to-day -day life, it's good to just use the word dangerous. Uh, perilous sounds a little bit too sophisticated, right? If my friend used the word perilous just willy-nilly, I would think it sounded a little weird, right? So it depends on the context. Usually the context of perilous is more literary. In books, we see this word. Antonyms, safe, secure, those mean the opposite of dangerous, right? He realized the perilous consequences of his unpreparedness, okay? So consequences, the negative results of his actions. So Chris McCandless in the story realizes or finally understands the dangerous results of him being not ready for the trip, him being unprepared. He's not really as ready as he thinks he is for this trip, and there are some dangerous consequences because of that. Here's a bonus example. The hikers took a perilous path. Mm, a perilous path, a perilous trail, a 
perilous road. Okay, a perilous way up the mountain. Maybe there was a safer option, but they took a perilous one, a dangerous path. Bonus example two, navigating the stormy seas was a perilous journey. Yeah, it was a dangerous journey, not a secure journey, not a safe journey. No, it was a perilous journey. Here's somebody sweating. <laughs> okay, one last word to talk about is poignant. It's a little bit hard to say. Poignant. Poignant. Kind of like poignant. 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 It means evoking. Ooh, here's a good word. Evoking or bringing out. Bringing out. Calling to mind. A keen sense of sadness or regret, okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be these emotions, but that's how you see it used most of the time. So if something is very touching, if something is very moving or maybe heartbreaking, we can say that it's poignant. Maybe this word is a little tricky to understand. Um, antonyms would be unemotional or indifferent if you don't care about something. If it doesn't make you feel something, then it's not poignant. And maybe that's a good way to understand this word. It makes you feel something deeply. Okay? So, in the story, we saw he wrote a poignant farewell acknowledging his mistakes. So, if the farewell is poignant, then it really speaks to people. That's another good way to think about this word. It really speaks to you. There's an English expression for you. If something speaks to you, then it really resonates, really resonates with you. You experience it very deeply. You feel it very deeply, right? So this farewell note that Chris wrote, when you read it, it really resonates, it really speaks to you, it really brings out some strong emotions, it makes you feel deeply, it's really poignant, okay? Bonus example, the movie's ending was poignant and left the audience in tears, okay? They were moved to tears, they were moved to tears, it really spoke to them, it really resonated with them, it made them feel deeply, it brought out sadness in them. It's poignant. Bonus example two, reading her old letters brought back poignant memories. Ooh, poignant memories. They could be really good memories, they could be really bad memories, but usually with this word, with poignant, it has kind of a bittersweet feeling to it, kind of a touching or sad or heartbreaking feel, usually. Okay, knowing everything we know about those advanced vocabulary words, we should be able to understand this story a bit better now, right? So let's reread the story and let's do a deep dive to really talk it through nice and slow and thoroughly. Okay, Into the Wild, Christopher McCandless, an adventurous and idealistic young man. We can say a romantic young man, right? He sees the world in a romantic light. He graduated from, graduated from Emory University, okay? Now, despite, in spite of having a promising future, a promising future, a future you could be excited about, a future that looks bright. You can also say a bright future. In spite of that, or despite that, Chris felt deeply dissatisfied with the materialistic or shallow world, and he yearned or desired a more meaningful existence. He wants his life to really mean something, right? He doesn't want to get caught up in the rat race people often call modern life in the big city, right? We often call that the rat race. He doesn't want to get caught up in the rat race. He was inspired by the writings of Jack London and Henry David Thoreau, 
two very famous writers, right? He made a decision. He decided to leave his privileged life, his privileged life, his life with a lot of luxury, a lot of comfort, a lot of ease, right? He left that life behind and set off or embarked on a journey into the wilderness. Chris donated. He donated. He gave away his savings to charity, helping people, right? Trying to do something good for the less fortunate, for people who maybe need the money more than you. He gave away his savings. He abandoned or got rid of his possessions, his things, the things he owns, right? He got rid of them and he set off on an adventure across America, adopting, taking on the name Alexander Supertramp. So he picks a new name for himself. His ultimate goal, ultimate, final goal, right? His end goal was to reach the wilds or the wilderness of Alaska, okay, uh, of Alaska and live off the land. Mm, this is a very romantic idea, right? To live off the land. Mm. That means you, nature can sustain you. Nature can provide for you. Nature's all you need. You don't need Walmart. You don't need a grocery store. You can get everything you need from nature by living off the land. Along the way, Chris met various, numerous, many people, right? That's what various means, who were captivated. Ooh, good word. Captivated by his charisma and determination. Captivated by. That means they were really enamored with, intrigued by. They found it very interesting. They couldn't look away, right? They, they, he left a deep impression on them. Why did he leave a deep impression? His charisma. That means people like him. People like him. If you have charisma, a noun, if you are charismatic, an adjective, then that means people like you. You're good with people. And he's got determination. Remember, he's resolute. However, he was resolute in his quest for solitude, his quest for solitude, his mission to be alone, his mission to find himself, his mission of self-discovery. He often distanced himself from those who grew too attached. Mm, if you grow too attached to something, then that means you really need it. You can't do without it. Like I'm attached to my phone. I don't know what I would do without my phone, right? So he is distancing himself from those, that means people, those people who grew too attached. So if he starts to form a deep bond with someone, then that bothers him. And he creates distance between him and that person. He distances himself, right? In April 1992, Chris finally reached or arrived at the Alaskan wilderness, the Alaskan wild. He found an old abandoned bus, a bus that people had left behind, right? An empty bus, which he called the magic bus, and made it his home. He made a new home for himself living out of this bus or living inside of this bus. We can say either living out of, living inside of. Both are okay. Chris was, vocab word, ecstatic, super excited, right? Reveling or really soaking in the freedom and beauty of nature. He kept a journal. If you keep a journal, that means you write in a journal uh, and you write frequently in the journal. He would document his thoughts and experiences as he lived off the land. However, as the days turned into weeks, mm, time is going by. The days turn into weeks. Time is passing more and more. Chris began to feel, to face the harsh realities of his situation. Ooh, harsh realities. 
maybe he had romanticized this experience a little bit too much. And now he's realizing that the reality of the situation, it's harsh. It's not pretty. It's uncomfortable. It's tough. It's difficult to deal with. Okay. He struggled to find enough food. He's having some difficulty finding food. His lack of proper equipment and knowledge became apparent. Oh, it became apparent. It became obvious. It became clear. Okay. Despite his determination, despite his resolution to keep going, despite his resolve, these all mean the same thing. The isolation, the time he spent alone, and unforgiving environment took a toll on him. Okay, the unforgiving environment. Oftentimes, we hear the saying that nature is very unforgiving, right? Nature is very unforgiving. It's not like a person. It's not like you or me. It doesn't forgive you if you make a mistake, if you fall off a cliff, if you attract the attention of a grizzly bear, if you get struck by lightning. Nature is not like a human in the sense that it will forgive your mistake. Nature is very cold and callous and unforgiving. And this started to take a toll on him. If something takes a toll on you, that means it is wearing on you. It is breaking you down. It is mm, making you more and more tired or exhausted, or it's making it difficult for you to keep going. His entries in the journal, um, his writings in the journal became more desperate as he realized the perilous consequences of his unpreparedness. Okay. So, the writing in his journal, it's becoming more desperate. You know, now he's starting to freak out a little bit. He's starting to get worried. Starting to get worried. That's a way you can think about this word desperate. You know, maybe if I'm desperate to meet somebody, if I'm a single person, right? Romantically, I'm a single person and I'm desperate to meet somebody. That means I'm starting to get worried. I'm starting to think, oh my gosh, am I going to meet somebody? Is it even going to happen? You start to get worried, right? So he's getting worried. He's getting desperate as he realizes how dangerous the results will be because he's unprepared. He's thinking, oh no, what have I done? I'm not prepared. And the consequences are going to be perilous. They're going to be really bad. In a final attempt to escape the wilderness, to get away from the wilderness, Chris discovered that the river he had crossed earlier had swollen and become impassable. Why? Because of or due to the melting snow. Mm. Okay, so he made one last attempt, one last try, a final attempt to get away, to escape from where? From the wild, from the wilderness. But there's a problem. He made a discovery. He discovered that the river that he crossed before, he's already crossed the river once, he crossed it earlier, it had swollen. Swollen means grown in size, right? Um, it had swollen up in size and it had become impassable. That means you cannot pass. You cannot get through. You cannot get across due to the melting snow. The snow has melted. Now there's way more water, right? So he's trapped. He can't get away. He's weakened by starvation, by hunger, the feelings of hunger and not enough food, right? He goes back. He returns to the magic bus, and there he spent his last days in kind of this weakened state, this weakened state, not weekend, like weekday, weekend, right? Weakened. He has become weak. In his journal, he wrote a poignant farewell. 
a poignant goodbye, a goodbye that really resonated with people, that made them feel deeply, that pulled at their heartstrings, acknowledging his mistakes, his mistakes, he's made mistakes, right? And expressing regret for the pain he caused his family. So he regrets causing his family pain. He regrets hurting them. He regrets hurting his family. Chris McCandless's story is both inspiring and cautionary. Ooh, it serves as a warning. It serves as a cautionary tale, a tale that you should learn from, right? It highlights or makes clear, makes apparent, makes obvious, makes visible the allure of adventure and the search for meaning. The allure of adventure, right? The draw. If something is very alluring, then it's very attractive to you. It draws you in. And the search for meaning, but also underscores the importance of preparation and respect for nature's power. If it underscores the importance of something, what is it underscoring? His his story is underscoring the importance of something. The importance of what? The importance of being ready. The importance of respecting nature's power. It's underscoring that. So it's emphasizing. Emphasizing that. His journey into the wild, though tragic, tragic, very sad, right, continues to resonate, to touch people, to touch those who seek to understand the complexities, all of the complicated sides of human ambition and the desire for true freedom, okay? Human ambition, human drive, human willpower, okay? So it's a very tragic story, yes, but it also resonates with people. It resonates with a certain kind of person, the kind of person who really wants to understand human nature, right? And understand what true freedom really tastes like. Okay, guys, you're doing awesome if you're still with me. That was a deep dive into the story, taking a really close, deep work look at all of the language used now, to end today's session, we've got some discussion questions. So here's what we're going to do. These are three different topics we could talk about based on the story. I'm going to read these to you. And then what I'd like you to do is pick your favorite question. Just pick one. And I'm going to challenge you to talk about it for one full minute. I want you to really push yourself to fill up that minute. Because the more we speak, the better our spoken English will be. It sounds really obvious, but I know plenty of students, plenty of people who really neglect the side of their English studies. They never talk. It's important to talk, right? So first, let me read these to you. What motivated Christopher McCandless to leave his life behind and venture or go into the wild? Do you think his reasons were justified? Like, do you think he was right to do what he did? Okay, so in other words, what was his motivation for doing all of this? Okay, that's the first thing we could talk about. Another thing we could discuss is how did Chris's idealism both benefit and hinder him during his journey? To benefit you is to do good things for you. To hinder you is to hold you back, hold you back, make things more difficult for you. So he's a romantic guy, right? He is a visionary. He sees the world in this romantic way. How was that a good thing? How did it hold him back? Okay, question three. In what ways can Chris's story serve as a cautionary tale, a warning for those seeking adventure and freedom? So I'd like you to pick one of these and talk about it for one minute. And guess what? I'm going to go first to give you a demonstration of what I'd like you to try and do. I'm going to talk about number two. 
his idealism. You know, Chris McCandless was a very idealistic guy. He was a romantic guy. That means he saw the world in this flowery, rose-colored way. He loved the idea of adventure, and he loved the idea of being an explorer and seeing a side of life that the rat race and society and the typical way of living in a big city would not allow him to experience. So, you know, this idealism, it was a good thing, a benefit for him because it it did show him a side of life that many people never experience. He had a very unique life. However, it did hinder him because he didn't think practically about a lot of the preparation. As a result, he did die. So it's a double-edged sword. Okay, that was my response to question two. What question are you going to pick? One, two, or three? I'd like you to pick one, decide on what you'd like to talk about, and then push yourself Here's your minute. Go ahead. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another deep work English study session all about the story Into the Wild. I have tons of other videos you can check out. Here's one that's going to pop up on the screen. Keep studying. Keep going. The more you study, the better your English is going to be. Let's do another video. I'll meet you there.